I don't care at what level you practice. If you've ever had problem with Scarbosa's criteria, this video is for you. Scarbosa's criteria is actually very straightforward. The issue is, people usually try to teach and or try to memorize all the different criteria. All Scarbosa does is show you what an abnormal left bundle branch block looks like. So maybe it's easier just to remember what a normal left bundle branch block should look like. The characteristics of a normal left bundle branch block are a wide QRS complex in leads V1 and or V2 that is longer than 0.12 seconds in duration, notching of the QRS complexes in the lateral leads, as well as the absence of septal Q waves in the lateral leads. Also, the QRS axis and the T wave and the ST segment axis should always be opposite of each other. Anything outside of this is Scarbosa's which means an abnormal left bundle branch block. Now that we know this, let's look at some examples. Here's example number one. I have a left bundle branch block and all I need to see is this right over here. I have a QRS complex and a T wave and a T segment that are going the same direction. <laughs> abnormal. Is that Scarbosa? Yeah, yes it is. Now let's look at another example. But before we do, listen. Elevation of five millimeters or more should always be a reason for concern. This stands true for pericarditis, early repo, LVH, and left bundle branch block. So let's look at this one. Do I have elevation of 5 millimeters or more? Yes, I do. That's all I need to know. Scarbosa or abnormal. Now, does Scarbosa mention that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it does. Now, let's look at our final example. Let's take a look at this. Look at leads V1, V2, and V3. I have a QRS complex that is going down and also an ST segment that is going down. <makes noise> Abnormal. That's all I need to know. Now, does the Scarbosa criteria mention that? Yeah. Yes, it does. 